It's a really fun stage. Like I, I am almost jealous of like we have a pretty good babysitting in the right room. No. Well, you are being recorded. You're here. Yes, you're, this is what you're on there. No, I know. But the mic is up there. So. No, this mic is good. Oh, you're going to cut this part out. Yes, exactly. Um, anyway, he's, he's developing so we know when we does something like that. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, I get babysitting for like four days a week. I'm kind of anxious to get home. All right, welcome to Baby Castles. Uh, we are going to have um, that ice that I spoke about to make the refreshments even more refreshing here pretty soon. But we're going to go ahead and get started. So my name is Nick Monfort. Um, you might find me around here once in a while. I teach up at MIT. I also teach at the School for Product Computation here in town. And um, I do a lot of work with computer-generated literary art. I'm very interested in uh, producing this myself, in curating work. I have an exhibit at MIT called Author Function that is up right there in the architecture library right now. Um, uh, and uh, one of the things that has been uh, really exciting for me um, is that I was invited by Tim Roberts of Counterpath Press to um, work with him as series editor and to edit a new series of books called Using Electricity. And Using Electricity is a series that we'll be launching tonight. We have the three authors, the three author programmers, who are responsible for generating uh, via the programs they wrote the first three books in this series. Um, we have uh, been using electricity this week because we started off in Philadelphia on Monday at the Kelly Writers House. We did a reading. Um, we took the train, the uh, electricity that we were using is uh, carried on the catenary wires of Amtrak's Northeast Corridor, as it turns out. And we took the train up to Providence. We did a reading at Brown and Literary Arts. And uh, then we went to Cambridge to the MIT Press Bookstore. And we're very glad to be here at Baby Castles in New York. And um, uh, all the, uh, particularly uh, glad that um, uh, Rafael Perez y Perez was able to join us this week from Mexico City. So I'm going to introduce um, uh, this, this series very briefly. The concept is that these are um, computer generated books that are presented uh, the way that you would expect a poetry book to uh, look and feel and give you access to the text inside. And that uh, rather than simply asking as some people do for a thinkership, Rather than simply being purely conceptual projects, they're books that reward reading in some way. You may not be compelled to read uh, all of them from start to finish or to read every word, but uh, some of them you might want to read passages out loud. Some of them you might want to engage with as a reader in other ways. Um, so for all of these uh, uh, reasons, the, <coughs> hold on a second. Did you get the door? Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so for so for all of these reasons, the series is uh, meant to welcome people to what uh, computer-generated literary art can be, but also to showcase that there are many different perspectives on it. It's not uh, just one thing. It's not just um, a terrifying uh, super intelligence. Although I'm looking forward to that proposal for a book in the series too. We we haven't had it yet. So the books uh, that we're gonna uh, uh, hear from tonight, um, first of all, Alison Parrish's articulations. We'll take a short break, and then um, Rafael Perez y Perez will read from Mexica, 20 years, 20 stories, and then I'll conclude with a reading from The True List. Um, so I'll introduce Alison. Uh, she's well known to some people around here. Um, she teaches at um, NYU's uh, interactive telecommunications program. She's on full-time faculty there. She's also involved with the School for Poetic Computation and has done a great deal of innovative literary art. One of the projects of hers that's best known is Every Word, a Twitter bot that over seven years tweeted every word of the English language as if 
there were such a thing as every word of the English language and inspired a host of other bots that uh, played on this concept. It was also published as a book by Instar Press, which is on this block, uh, as an ebook. Um, Allison's been named as top bot creator by the Village Voice. <laughs> and we're really glad to have her in the series and also to have her to start off the reading tonight. So, Allison Parrish, join me in welcoming her. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Nick, and thank you, Baby Castles, for um, having us tonight. Um, <coughs> really excited to read here. Baby Castles is sort of like it's like home port for for those of us here in in New York, and um, uh, so yeah, whatever. I want to be able to do that cool thing where you like adjust it, but I don't know how to do it. So. Um, we will see how it goes. Um, so. This uh, book, Articulations, is based around the concept of similarity and how similarity is used in poetry. Um, similarity is, is another word for repetition, basically, right? Like when you are reading a poem or any other kind of text, one way that you create a sense of cohesion in a text is by repeating things, using similar elements. Um, and so this book starts with the idea of um, computational models of similarity in text. Um, I started with a corpus of poetry in the public domain. Uh, Project Gutenberg is a corpus of text in the public domain. I isolated the lines that looked like poetry from that corpus um, using a computer program. That ended up being like three million lines of poetry or so. Um, and with that corpus, I was interested in thinking about like, well, how do we take starting with similarity as the like foundational principle of poetic composition. Let's make that assumption for a second. Um, what are the interesting things that we can do? How can we determine similarity between these lines and create compositions based on that idea? Um, so the book contains artifacts from two different uh, means of determining similarity. One is phonetic similarity. So how similar to two do two lines of poetry sound? How similar do they make your mouth move while you're saying them? Um, and that's the first part of the book is compositions based on that concept. The second concept of similarity is syntactic similarity. So um, are the words with the same parts of speech and the same grammatical roles in the same order? Right? Because that's another way of creating um, cohesion in a text is having lines that have similar syntactic structures. Um, so using uh, computer, again, using electricity and uh, matrix factorization, um, which is not in Alison Knowles' House of Dust, although she made. Um, I uh, made a program that essentially assigns a vector to every line of poetry based on how it sounds and what the syntax of that line is. And then in that vector space of all three million lines, um, I do a random walk through the space, basically picking a line at random, adding that line to the output, picking the next line that's most similar to it, adding that line to the output, picking the line that's most similar to that, adding that line to the output, and so forth, excluding any line that's already been a part of the output. Um, and then that can go forever until all of the lines are exhausted, but um, paper costs money, so we had to pick just like you know 80 pages of that instead of all however many pages. Um, so I'm gonna read from the first section um, an excerpt of the phonetic similarity section. And then when I'm done with that, I will read um, one, one short one from the syntactic similarity section. Um, let me find the one that I actually want to read. The setting day, a snake said, it's a cane, it's a kill, is like a stain, like a stream, like a dream. And like a dream sits like a dream, sits like a queen, shine like a queen, when like a flash, like a shell, fled like a shadow, like a shadow still. Lies like a shadow still, I like a flash, O oh light, shall I like a fool, quoth he. 
You shine like a lily, like a mute, shall I still languish, and still I like Alaska. Lies like a lily white is, like a lily white, like a flail, like a whale, like a wheel, like a clock, like a pea, like a flea, like a mill, like a pill, like a pill, like a pall, hangs like a pall. Hands like a bowl, bounds like a swallow, falls like a locust swarm on boughs whose love was like a cloak for me, whose form is like a wedge. But I was saved like a king, was lifted like a cup, or leave a kiss, but in the cup, the cup she fills again, up she comes again, till she comes back again, till he comes back again, till I come back again. Like mechanical toys, like a pale antagonist, like a beacon, like a star, not unlike a story compiled, I too reckoned like a boy, I take the cup you kindly reach, who smoke and sip the kindly cup, and give to each its purpose like a king to work in, things had become difficult. Taking up with her contempt, Worthing is a much taken, a king, they said, what king? Figuring, checking up, testing all day. Then I get drunk in secret on expensive liquor, giving and taking strength, strength reciprocal, Digging and sinking and drifting and writing and thinking and eating and drinking and eternally thinking and blinking and winking, thinking and thinking of Johnny Glenn, catching and losing, gaining and failing, singing and calling and singing again, being and singing and singing and singing, singing, singing and dancing, singing and dancing, they go, singing and dancing as they go, thus dancing on and singing as they danced and gazed upon its swinging sign. Nightgowns rush dancing and exulting in, singing and gliding and going, going in and coming out, going out and coming in, upon who's going out and coming in, coming and going, coming or going. The coming, going, I'm going, I'm going, beyond recall, I'm going, I'm going, I am going, Peter, going, going, no reserve, for I am going, going, Margaret, we are going, we are going to see, we are going to eat three times a day who are doing pretty well doing pretty well. Do I wail, Hugo, I will, to go away and when to go away? An errand why or where to go, anyone dressing to go out, till going out one dewy morn of knowing what you are going to do. Do you know I am going away, whither or why or even how I am going? Though I am very old and wise, although I am, I only am a child, and still I am a child, though I be old, Though I am not so old by two years, oh, 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 ah, 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 see, ooh, ever true, Jericho, so keen, so keen, so lean, so lean, play with, wow, ow, 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 oh, oh, of you we complain to you, I owe a debt, to you I only meant, to you and only to you, to you and only you in my despair. And knowing who you are, he pass you by. How are you hoeing your row, my boy? Say, how are you hoeing your row? How in your cheeks you hold few holes in your skin through who's yours, you whose wings, O oh, ye whose home, leave your home behind you. Leave your home behind, lad. The homebound sea boy hails. Hurry his homebound sail. Her helm, obey his hand. Doth well her helm obey. O oh boy, God help her. Oh boy, God save you. Oh boy, God keep you. To go back, so go back, go, 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 now go, 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 display you go below, you go before and obey you, and now before you go, Hugo, by birth go by, go by, I go by land or sea, Enoch at times to go by land or sea shall let you go, good night, then. Who, good Orlando, being gone before, so good Orlando, when he has made sound joy, good Orlando, and joy Rinaldo show, till time draws on when they should go to bed, and we boys every night would go to the door, do good or evil to them some slight way. Led them unto good or evil, reference to good or evil, to good or evil as may come. From May to June you go. Oh, do be so good, do go, dear, rain, do go away. Ere what ere you go to be, goodness knows you were too good, too good, of ill to good, or good to ill. Too good, do us good. Of doing good, the joy of doing good. I am doing no good, what am I going to do? I am going to bed now. Good night. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
so that's that's from section one on phonetic similarity. I'm just going to read like one, one. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, had had a little bit of heckling there, but that's fine. Right. Um, I just want to read one from the syntactic similarity section. Um, this is number twenty-three. And the old man cackled thus, but no, the selfish owner cried. But alas, the good time passes. And lo, the far star cried, or like the sudden tempest rose. And there an eager envoy sped, and well that lifelike portrait drew. And home the mighty warrior hide. And never a true child forsakes, and the enlivened sense regales, and the mighty choir descends, but the little playmate sleeps, and the fragrant clover grows, and the troubled sea enlarges. That's all. Thank you. All right, with ICE having arrived in the donation stage in the back, we'll take a, just a brief break of about uh, seven minutes, I would say. I think the, I think the phrase that our, our host, Todd Anderson, uses is vape them if you got them, uh, something like that. Very good. Um, uh, maybe. And by the way, I should mention that there is bona fide retail exchange available um, by the coffin-shaped um, arcade cabinet back there. Uh, the lovely woman uh, who you see raising her hand in a dramatic gesture has uh, the using electricity books for sale at a price that significantly undercuts um, uh, the uh, evil giant uh, corporate online bookstores. <laughs> All right, so we'll be back in about seven minutes. Rafael Perez, Perez will present from Mexica. I'll present from the True List, and then maybe we'll have a little time for questions.